The Noble Cause podcast is an expression of life's learnings. I'll be your host, Michelle Cardocus Harrison, and I invite you to connect with me as we explore a plethora of interesting subjects, such as psychology, stoicism, physics, alchemy, health, fitness, and practical tools for the seeking mind, body, and soul. Join me and other special guests on this journey to educate, to inspire, to encourage, and to turn any experience into a noble cause. Hello, my people. Thanks for joining me today. I have a couple things that I wanted to talk about. I had put out a question online if there was something, an issue or a topic that maybe I could talk about or help or expand on. So I got a lot of feedback, so that's very helpful. Thank you to anybody that uh, gave me some feedback. One of the things that I heard a few times was the issue of body image and how that relates to our self-esteem and our confidence. So I feel like that's a really good opportunity to talk about uh, maybe my journey and where I started and where I come from, as well as the mindset, thought patterns, habits, self-discipline that... Uh, has helped me on my journey. So a little bit of history for me. I currently am a CrossFit coach and a CrossFit athlete. I would say that I'm probably in the best shape of my life. I feel very strong. My body feels very healthy. And I have made it to the point to where I feel really good about myself. But I wasn't always there. So I've been all over the spectrum, whether it was being a teenager and comparing myself to other girls, maybe girls that were prettier or girls that were more girly than me, or maybe the boys liked them more than they liked me. I always seemed to be like more of the tomboy or the the friend. So from coming from that to young adulthood, I think... A lot of us experience when either our bad habits catch up to us or maybe things just change in our lifestyles. Maybe there's more stresses into our lives or things change for us and we realize that we can't do the things that we used to do. Our metabolism has slowed down or things have just changed. So I definitely experienced that in my early 20s. That was probably the beginning of me not really feeling good in my own skin. And I also worked a lot. I'm known to have multiple jobs at one point in time. So I didn't always have the time or take the time or make the time to take care of myself. I also experienced what it was like to have a different body after having my first child that was definitely a challenge for me. I gained a normal amount of weight, but even a normal amount of weight is a a hard thing to lose after you have a child, and then after you have to get used to the new schedule of having a baby and getting used to putting another little person's needs ahead of your own. That's just part of motherhood, part of adulthood. I experienced what it felt like after my first child, and I uh, it motivated me when my daughter was nine months old. I was so fed up with looking at myself in the mirror and not liking what I saw, or letting it affect the way that I felt about myself. And so I challenged myself. I committed to losing weight. I committed to working out for me. It was working out at home whenever I had the chance. It took me six months straight of working out 
practically every single day, counting every single calorie. I mean, I did like the legit thing and it was hard. And that was just to lose 20 pounds. And it took everything that I had to do that. It was very hard. I'll never forget the first time I did one of the workouts. I did a lot of beach body programs. So I remember the first time I ever did the insanity workout and holy shit, like it was brutal. And there's something like very, very humbling about doing something that just kicks your ass. I mean, the first two seconds kick your ass. But I stuck with it and I prevailed because I was really committed to just feeling better about myself. You know, that's what it was all about for me. So I got in good shape after my daughter, better shape than I was even before I got pregnant, and was able to continue to work out at home. Um, I did that for probably a good four years. And then we decided to have our second child. And my pregnancy was a little bit different with that. I got a kidney infection when I was like eight weeks pregnant and it took so much out of me. It was like a really bad situation and I never felt like like it took so much out of my reserves in my body that I never recovered from that. So I wasn't able to work out like I wanted to and I really wanted to like stay healthy and stay fit and bounce back quickly and all of those like things that we crave or want after we have a child but sometimes life has a different plan for us. So after my second child, I had to go right back to square one. If you've had multiple kids, then you know what that feels like. I'm not the woman that pops out babies and has a six-pack the next day. That ain't me. <laughs> so I experienced that. Um, I experienced trying to do the right thing and exercising and working out and just hating, like, my body jiggling around all the place or those damn mirrors all over like or wearing the tight clothes that don't fit like that's such a crappy feeling like here I am trying to do the right thing and I just feel like shit the whole time and it's very discouraging so I have been there for sure. I've been frustrated with seeing little change in my body. I've been frustrated with the ups and downs of everything um, but through all of it there has always been a level of committing. Committing to yourself. Uh, committing to yourself and making that non-negotiable. Because we can't ask for permission to take care of ourselves. We have to show ourselves and the people in our lives what that looks like, what the self-care looks like. So it could be different for everybody. You know, for, for me, exercise has helped me with my body image, but it also like is all mental. My mindset that I choose to adopt every single day or caring about the way that I talk to myself or being mindful of the way that I talk to myself. So that's what it is for me, but it might be something different for, for other people. I believe that like just pampering ourselves or maybe like giving ourselves the love and attention that we need to be gentle and kind with ourselves instead of being so harsh. We are like our own worst critics, you know, and if you heard somebody talking to your best friend the way that you talk to yourself, you would want to kick their ass, you know, you'd be like, back off, like, do not talk to this person I care about that way. We got to start sticking up for ourselves that way. Because that's the only thing that's really going to help is like finding the self-confidence for ourselves. And there's little things that can help. And I encourage you to find, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes it's like, maybe you need to go buy some new clothes because the clothes you have like just don't fit you. I, I always say everybody looks fat in clothes that are too small for them. So just like whatever you need to do to make yourself like feel a little bit better in the skin you're in, do it, you know, do it for yourself. Maybe it's an aesthetic thing in your home. Maybe it's an aesthetic an aesthetic thing on your body. Maybe it's getting your hair done or buying new makeup. Maybe it's time in nature that makes you feel grounded and makes you feel okay with the world and okay with yourself and connected to the earth as, you know, a sovereign being of this of this planet. So it's different for everybody. Maybe it is 
doing the little things to pamper yourself, maybe getting a massage, or just taking that time for yourself can really boost your self-esteem because it lets your body know that you do care and that you're going to do uh, what it takes to protect yourself. And, you know, this whole self-care is all part of that. Um, some of the things that I have experienced for myself whenever it comes to these mindsets and talking about body image, we underestimate what it takes to break ourselves free from that. And in my experience in the gym, I feel like you kind of have to put yourself intentionally in the position to break yourself down, break yourself down, so that you can find out exactly what you're made of and that you can create who you want to be. So sometimes we got to let it work on us. Let all of those feelings come up. Let all of the insecurities come up and out and challenge yourself and find out exactly what you're made of. I think that you might be surprised with what you're capable of whenever you let go of the control of things needing to be a certain way. So sometimes we have to just break ourselves down so that we can build ourselves back up. One thing to keep in mind is that this is all very personal. I think it is extremely unrealistic, unfair to ourselves to ever compare ourselves to somebody else, especially whenever we're talking about body image. There's different body types. There's different supportive resources. There's different stress levels in our lives. There's different schedules, different family dynamics. There are so many different variables in each individual life that we cannot compare ourselves. How can we compare like the ripped CrossFit, CrossFit athlete that has no kids and is like sponsored by all these nutrition companies that just gives them free shit all the time and is totally like on Instagram looking like a million bucks, you know? Like who's to say that that person is any better or even fitter or healthier than the mother of three who does the best that she can, might be a little bit overweight, but takes, you know, the time that she can, when she can to do the things that are right for her. Like who's to judge those? Who's to even compare those two? I don't think that you can make a comparison. Me being somebody that is a, a mother, like I just have to put myself on, on, on a different level than other people because it's just not realistic for me and it's not fair to me to compare myself to other people. I have my own thing going on. And I think that we really have to focus on ourselves and try not to focus so much on other people. Because when we're just focusing on what other people are and what we lack compared to them, we're not being fair to ourselves and we're not honoring ourselves, which is what this thing is all about. I heard this quote the other day that said, confidence isn't thinking that you're better than everybody else, but it's knowing that there's no need to compare yourself to anybody else. And that is like so important, that concept. For many reasons in our society, we're led to feel guilty or bad or vain for even having a like self-esteem. And usually that comes from other people's insecurities being projected on somebody that is confident in their self, like, oh, you're just cocky. And I'm not talking about being cocky, that's one thing, or being arrogant, that's one thing. But just having a healthy self-esteem, it's okay. I remember having to convince myself that it's okay to love yourself. It's okay to like yourself. It's okay to look in the mirror and be like, dang, girl, you're looking good today. It's okay. And it's good for you. And... That's where, like, things come from in our lives. That's where, if we come from that place of confidence or that place of self-love and self-care, that's when we're able to, like, truly be present in the rest of our lives because we're not focusing on things outside of us. We're not focusing on what that person thinks or, um, like, how somebody views you. We're focusing on ourselves. 
So with that proper perspective, I think that that's a good place to start. I always, if, if there's ever a, a chance for me to encourage us taking some time for some self-reflection and being honest with ourselves, I'm always going to encourage that. So what that looks like is us being honest with where we are in our life. Are there things that you could try a little bit harder at? Are there, could you do a little bit more? Could you make those small changes in your life to get you to a place to where you feel just a little bit better about what you're doing or about yourself? Maybe it's waking up earlier, going to sleep earlier. Maybe it is saving money on maybe something that isn't good for you and investing it into something that is good for you. Maybe it's getting a gym membership. Maybe it's even trying to attract more supportive people in your life or uh, seek out groups that are more supportive of you. I see like there's a Facebook group called Constantly Varied Gear in it, and it is from a clothing company and they have this this group that is for people that are just you know trying to better themselves whether it's in the gym I see a lot of I follow it a lot so I see a lot of women on there encouraging each other a lot of women like maybe posting something that they don't want to post on their personal page because they don't want to show like the before and after or they're proud of themselves but they aren't sure that other people in their life really get it so it's kind of like a safe space um, so that's always a, a, a good option like to find support in your life is to seek out different groups or organizations or people that are kind of just trying right along with you right because I know for me I work so hard at what I do but whenever I'm maybe around people that don't don't take the time or really like care to challenge themselves or maybe they're just totally good with the way that they are uh, they don't really get what I'm doing or they don't know what it takes to do what I do so I try not to put too much of my self-worth in the hands of somebody or people that maybe like aren't trying like I'm trying so that's and that's just like that's neither here nor there that's not trying to be judgmental towards anybody that's just seeking out support for you to help you in your journey. Um, for me, the thing that I had to be honest with myself is like, what the hell are you doing to your body? What are you like putting into your body? The thoughts that you're thinking, the relationships that you have, the energy that you're allowing to be scattered everywhere. What are the things that you're doing that are affecting you, that are stopping you or hindering you from being to where you want to be from having the time to commit to the things that you want to commit to and a lot for me was reorganizing my schedule especially with kids and you know having a family and I have multiple jobs and I have hobbies and things that I like to do so I, I had to take the time I had to be honest with myself and say stop making excuses yeah of course you're a mom yeah of course you have a job get it yeah that's life but what can you do? Not what can't you do? What, not what are the things that are stopping you? What are the things that you can do, right? To organize your life to support this self-care. And even little things help. Sometimes for me, it's like I got to wake up 10 minutes earlier so that I can do like a little meditation just for myself so that right off the bat, I can like put myself in a steady, grounded headspace before I take on the world. So it's little things like that that could make a big difference for sure. I have to say that a lot of the body image and the confidence and the self-esteem, what we're dealing with mostly when we have a negative view of ourselves, sometimes it's a matter of insecurities or of anxiety. I know for me, that's like a big thing for me. But uh, I've learned that even though I feel insecure, even though I feel anxious, 
I'm committed to my health, I'm committed to feeling good about myself, and I'm committed to being the best that I can with what I have. So sometimes that means that I have to challenge myself. That means that I have to walk through fire even if I feel like totally crazy sometimes. I've learned to make that make those insecurities take a back seat, bud. You're not the one that's running this game. I am. And I'm committed to doing what it takes because, you know, like there's times where maybe there's a like a workout or something at the gym where you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do that and I'm gonna be around other people that can do it and I'm gonna feel like shit and I don't and I don't want to put myself in that position. And it can really stop you from doing what you need to do. So sometimes it can stop us from doing the thing that we need to do, right? So it's like you gotta just put on your big girl panties or whatever metaphor you wanna use. And do the thing. Just do the thing. Do it fucking scared. Do it with insecurities. Do it with anxiety. Do it with fear. Do it with all that because it's not the difference of the person that doesn't struggle with those things. It's the difference of the person that carries on and does what they're committed to in spite of feeling that way. So we have this illusion where we see somebody that looks so confident and they like have all of their shit together and they have a nice body and they have a nice family and their whole life just looks freaking perfect. And you might think, I'm not like that. I'm like, I'm riddled with anxiety and I just like have all these insecurities. I don't feel good about myself, all of these things. Well, maybe that person is too. But the difference is they're not letting it stop them from doing what they need to do. And you're never going to get to where you want to be if you don't do the work. So whatever you need to do to just do it, do it. And the more we challenge ourselves, the more that we step outside of our comfort zone, The more we make new connections in our brain, the more we're able to think of things differently and get out of these like thought patterns and these like negative um, views of ourself. We have to recreate to the way that we think about things. So a cool thing that I've been doing and that is like an easy thing to encourage other people to do is whenever we're talking about stepping outside of our comfort zone or doing things scared try with like super like harmless things right like freaking wear bright red lipstick and like rock that shit you know like tell yourself how hot you are every time you look in the mirror or wear some high heels to the gas station and freaking like walk like you're on a catwalk baby regardless of what anybody says or thinks or whatever you know like challenge yourself to get outside of your comfort zone with things that don't matter because if we're able to like start there then that can carry over to other parts of your life right so you challenge yourself you put yourself out there and even if you're terrified pushing yourself past those limits and you might be totally surprised at what happens after that you might realize that, oh my God, you didn't die. Like, you're okay. You survived that. Even though you were scared shitless, you did it. You might end up being proud of yourself for being willing to take it to the next level or willing to step outside of your your comfort zone, you know? And then that's kind of where we boost our our confidence and our self-esteem whenever we're able to be like, oh dang, like I just did that. I didn't think I could do it. I was scared the whole time, but I just did that. You know, and and then you can really encourage yourself to do it again. Do it a little bit more. Maybe at the gym you're going to go a little bit longer or you're going to like push a little bit harder, like just little bits at a time. And before you know it, your threshold is like so much farther than you thought that you ever could be. Like for me, I try to do stuff that scares the crap out of myself often I'm just crazy like that. I think that it's good to just push yourself out of your comfort zone, especially for harmless things. Like, who's it going to hurt? Nobody. But it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for your brain. It's going to be good for you to learn how to do things scared or how to do things with secure insecurities or anxiety or all of these things that could hold us back if we allow it to or we could learn to change the relationship that we have with it to not stop us or stall us from doing the things that we need to do. Whenever I'm in the gym, like I like once I got to I want I wanted to be the person that could like 
take my shirt off and just wear a sports bra and like not feel like crazy. I'm like, oh my God, they're looking at my belly or my rolls or whatever. I got to a point to where I felt relatively better about my body because I had put in the work for it. But now it's like every chance I have, I'm freaking, you know, if you're around me for more than 10 minutes, I'm taking my shirt off and it's not because I like think that I'm better than anybody else. It's because I feel confident enough in my own skin, first of all, and second of all, I, I'm going to do what I need if I'm hot or sweaty or whatever. Like, I'm just going to do what I need to do regardless of what anybody else thinks. So it encourages me to not care about what other people think. And also, there's something very special about whenever we are free to love ourselves, we encourage other people to love themselves as well. So this is where the exterior happens or the exterior like influences us is sometimes like as much as I don't look at other people to make me feel better about me but sometimes it's motivating for me to think about other people that are maybe a couple step like that are maybe where I started or maybe I know exactly how they're feeling because I've I've been through it and I want to be an example or I want to encourage them in some way to like either push themselves or um, like just do you, you know, like whenever we're able to, whenever we're free for our, ourselves and confident in ourselves, then it really inspires other people. And that's how you, it's not informing, it's inspiring. That's really how you can have a positive effect on people. So I try to do the little things that I can to encourage other people and it really boosts my self-esteem, you know, being that person. And whenever people tell me, like, you motivate me or you push me or especially with being a coach, it's important to me to take care of myself so that I can be that example for people that are just beginning or maybe they don't feel super confident with themselves. I'm able to, like, be that influence. So sometimes it's looking at other people because I guarantee no matter where you are, there's somebody that is a couple steps behind you. So maybe you just think about them for a second and think about how you can honor yourself to encourage them to honor themselves. So the last thing that I want to close with is um, how we, like how this all comes from our sense of self and how body image, how self-esteem, how confidence Sometimes there's a lot of exterior influences, but there's there are things that we can do for ourselves that do help. For me, whenever I'm feeling like super insecure or I'm thinking or I'm looking through the lenses of somebody else, this happens to me a lot. I I don't have my own sense of self. I'm looking through what my idea of what somebody else might think of me is, which isn't even true, first of all, because we have no idea how other people see us, like we are never going to have that insight. So it's important to me to take time to quiet my mind and all those busy chattering thoughts, all of those anxieties, all of the insecurities, and do just like a quick, for me, it's a quick meditation. It's like a couple deep breaths, get your heart rate down just a little bit, and focusing just on my body and not what I look like, what I feel like. What does your body feel like? What are your senses? You know, like I get in touch with all these senses and just like let myself feel safe in my own body. And it grounds me and it encourages me to come from the self and to not let all of these other exterior things influence the way I feel about me. It really like that is one that's about the only thing I can do sometimes is just like bring it in, you know, like. Stop for a second, feel what it feels like to be you, feel what it feels like to be safe inside of your body and not care or worry about the outside world for just a moment. Just be with you. It gives me the opportunity to get my head on straight, my head on straight, and letting all of those feelings, those negative feelings or the insecurities or the fear, take a freaking back seat. Because you ain't in the driver's seat today. I get to make decisions. I'm the one that decides what we're doing and what we're not doing. 
So learning and challenging yourself to like move through things. We want to go above, we want to go below, we want to totally avoid, we want to suppress. The only way we're going to get to that point where we feel good in our bodies and good about ourselves and good about the way that we are and the way that we interact and our relationships and what we bring to the collective and to this planet and to our community is if we take that time for ourselves to feel good about ourselves, do what we can when we can, celebrate those small victories, you know, stop thinking about what you didn't do today. Think about the couple things that you did do today and try to focus on those. And the more that you get your brain going in that direction and reminding yourself, then the easier this will get, I promise, you know, like you will get through it, but you have to move through it. You can't ignore it and it will never happen if you just stall your whole life, you know? So you got to really build on that and be gentle and kind with yourself and others. Self-talk is a big freaking deal. And maybe if you don't have it for you right now, maybe you can be an encouragement to somebody else. Those little things really like add up at the end of the day. So I hope that this has helped you in some way. I know that I am really blessed and honored to be able to help people on a regular basis in my and the work that I do being a CrossFit coach. And I encourage people to, you know, do what they can for themselves, but not be so hard on yourself too. You know, like it's okay. We're all human. None of us are perfect. So move through things. Try to challenge yourself. Try to be honest with yourself about the things that you can change. And before you know it, you might start feeling better about yourself and then maybe you can be a positive influence to somebody else. So it's kind of what it's all about. Uh, thanks for listening to me today and um, until next time, much love. Thank you for taking the time to tune in to the Noble Cause podcast. It is a great joy and honor to be able to connect with you. If you feel this episode or if you can think of someone that can benefit from it, share it with them. You could also leave me a, a review, like the Facebook page, The Noble Cause, or hit me up at the Noble Cause Podcast at gmail.com. I love connecting with new people, sharing ideas, and keeping the flow of conscious energy so that we may continue to be inspired, interested, and interesting. I hope this transmission has served your highest good, and until next time, much love to my people. Thank you.